Jack here, owner of Hockey Alley, bringing you back hockey history. Today I have from the New York Islanders, Trevor Gillies. I'm going to ask him a little bit about the fighting and the years he played with the Islanders. How are you doing, Trevor? I'm blessed and unstoppable is what I like to say, Jack. Uh, it's a pleasure to be connected with you, my man. Thank you. Thank you for making the time to come on and talk to me on my channel. Really appreciate it. No, I'm very honored you asked. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I want to ask you, where did you play your minor hockey? Well, I grew up, I uh, was born in Milton, Ontario, in Canada. And, um, you know, because I have a brother and a sister, I just played house league growing up uh, the first, you know, little while. And then probably around eight years old, they made me leave the house league level to go up to travel rep. Um, I think it was double A. Mm -hmm. They didn't have a triple A team there. Um, just because, you know, I was, I was doing real well and they didn't, they wanted me to be on the team. So, you know, it was a little tough with my parents working full time, but, <clears throat> and then we ended up moving, um, to Cambridge and I made the double A team there. That was the highest level we had in Cambridge. That's my mm -hmm. hometown. Mm -hmm. Um, I, we moved there when I was about 12 and, um, then a year or so later, we ended up getting a triple A team. It was called the Cambridge Hawks. Mm -hmm. And we played against guys like Joe, I'm 79 birthday, so Joe Thornton was in our league. Okay, uh, Brian Brian Campbell. They played for Elgin Middlesex Chiefs. Um, I think they're both from around the St. Thomas area. So there's a lot of good players. Mike Van Ryan's my age. He was in the league. Um, and so yeah, played played AAA until um, 15. You know, right after Major Bantam, my own age group. Um, I was the captain. I got to play with my brother and a lot of my buddies. We had a pretty solid squad, um, and then I moved away from home to play Tier 2 Junior A for the Caledon Canadians. Mm -hmm. That's a, um, a provincial, Ontario Provincial. Is it So they can get scholarship from there? Yeah, yeah. so yeah. at that time it was called the Metro Junior A Hockey okay. League, yeah, yeah, yeah. which was independent, and there was the, uh, the, you know, the Ontario Provincial as oh, well. Okay. Um, but when I got blessed to play on the best team, um, you know, we were incredible. We were owned by Mr. Scott Abbott, who is one of the inventors of Trivial Pursuit. So, oh. you know, as a young kid, I got to play with almost, there was a few young guys that they keep, you know, a goalie, but if me, it was the youngest defenseman, a couple forwards, trying to get them full scholarships, Division One or to the OHL. Yes. Um, but the rest of the team's really like, you know, 1920, like studs. We, we won the whole thing. Um, a guy by the name of Dana Zubris was on my team. Oh, yeah. Um, so that was a huge that was a huge blessing because we were so good and um, he was such a, a, a phenom of a talent that you know whatever the number was back then twenty eight NHL teams or whatever it was and the OHL and major junior um, division one college and all that they were in our building every night mm -hmm. because he he went right from that that year winning with us to getting drafted fifteenth overall to the Philadelphia Flyers and obviously he had a twenty something year. Uh, NHL career yeah so that really benefited a lot of guys just having all those eyes and um then I got drafted 19th overall as a defenseman back then to the Ontario Hockey League and mm -hmm. um ended up signing a letter of intent in for um UMass Lowell mm -hmm. um not UMass Lowell um UMass Amherst I think they were called the Minutemen uh went and did a you know visitation and all that and was studying for my SATs and then yeah coach kind of called me in the office and said i got in a fight with supposedly the toughest guy in the league the toughest guy in the league was roger maxwell he was on my team mm -hmm. he was a 20 year old kind of took me under his wing i was a kid and uh, i just played a hard-nosed defensive style um and you my played, favorite player yeah you my played defense player growing up just, go ahead i'm oh, sorry you played defense all your career no i played defense all growing up okay um and then and then even in pro, and then when I got called up to the AHL, many years later, I'm sure we'll talk about that, um, Tom Rowe told me it would be in my best um, interest. I played some games for Lowell Lock Monsters on D, but he started working with me all the time on skills and tipping pucks and getting in better shape because I was in the East Coast League, you know, having some fun. And, um, you know, he put me through the paces. Every day he worked with me, though, so I love that man. He changed my life. Uh, I wouldn't have been able to stick around like I did if I didn't if I played defense. So, uh, yeah, I played, I played D until probably around 23, 24 years old. Wow. 23, I think. Yeah. 
Wow, big adjustment to go to forward. Uh, I want to ask you, how was it to play with, with uh, out there with Joe Thornton at the time when he was a kid? Was he good th that good back then? Uh, he was phenomenal. Um, Even at that age? Yeah, just... Okay. Yeah, he wasn't as big as he... You know, he's always really, really tall, but then he filled out. But mm -hmm. he was phenomenal when he was young. He was a phenom. I mean, just in, lit it up points-wise and just an amazing passer. Very much the same player he was in the NHL, um, you know. Yeah. He, just, he was incredible. And Brian Campbell um, had an amazing OHL career, an amazing NHL career. He was a stud defenseman. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, they, they were probably the two best, I'd say, in the league, and they were on the same team. Oh, that's, that's awesome. And who was your idol growing up? <laughs> My idol growing up, uh, I like many guys, but I like the rough and tough style. Mm -hmm. um, I, I wasn't confused. Like, you know, growing up, obviously everyone – wants to score a, a million goals and all that. But, like, I knew my strengths. And um, I love – my favorite player was uh, Bob Probert. May he rest in peace. Uh, mm -hmm. He was the champ. Uh, I got to play for one of my other idols in 03, 04 in Marty McSorley with the Springfield Falcons. Okay. So I loved him growing up. Ty Domi is one of my favorites. Um, you know, I love those kind of players. Yeah. Um, yeah. So those those are my guys. Yeah, Bob Probert, he was a thirty goal scorer too. I mean, he he had skill. He wasn't just a fighter. Oh, yeah, yeah, he yeah. Score. He was probably yeah. the best playing best playing heavyweight of all time, and he was a killer. And yeah. um, you know, he played in the All Star game, and people were more interested in meeting Big Bob than they were, you know, some of the superstars. So <laughs> yes, yeah, right. Um, I never got to meet him, but I have a shrine of his in my office here in my house. Wow. Uh, with his jersey, it says thirty three hundred pims. It's signed by Bob. That's it's all cool. professionally framed, and, it, and then there's a young pitcher of Bob sitting on the bench that side, and then another pitcher on the right. Um, that's him fighting his best friend Joe Kosher um, when Kosher was they were teammates, but then Kosher was with the um, the Rangers, yeah. and that's signed by um, by both of them. And I also have uh, Joe Kosher's uh, jersey autographed, and oh, that's cool. A bunch of other guys, Scott Stevens. I've been very blessed to be able to meet some of my idols, so that was cool. Yeah, it's very cool. And uh, did you have any favorite coaches over the years besides Tom Rowe? Yeah, I've had many, man. Um, my first year pro, I got to play for a guy named Mark Potvin. He was a fighter oh, yeah. in the NHL. Um, he, he's in heaven as well. So, you know, may he rest in peace. But I got to play for a guy that did my role as a 20-year-old pro in Biloxi, Mississippi. And when I got called up, Bruce Boudreaux was my coach. So that was kind of cool. Oh, okay. I didn't play there that much um, at that time. But I loved him. And then my second year of pro, I played for another heavyweight in Jeff Brubaker. Loved playing for Brew. I played for a lot of, like, rough and tumble style guys. Um, in the American League, uh, Tom Rowe is my all-time fave, as well as Troy G. Ward. I got to play with him, for him at the end of my career. He's the mm -hmm. smartest hockey mind I ever played for. X's and O's, he's incredible, and he truly cares about the human, yeah. um, not just you know what you do on the ice. Like he asks you about your family and how you're doing, and it's good. Um, just an amazing man. Um, so I played for him. Unfortunately, at the very end of my um, career in the AHL, I wish I would have had him when I was young um, because I would have been a hell of a lot better player. His attention to detail is incredible. Um, just little things that I never even learned until I was an old pro. He oh. He's amazing. He's an amazing teacher. Um, the other guy I really liked was Jack Capuano. Um, oh, yeah. I played for Jack, played for Jack in Bridgeport. Um, and then I got blessed to play for him when he got the call um, to the Islanders mm -hmm. and loved Jack. Um, and then towards the, the end of my career, um, you know, I went down to um, the East Coast League just to try to win a championship and stay close to my family because my little girl didn't remember me playing at the higher levels, you know. Now yeah. she's 15, but back then she was tiny. So I got I was only going to play one year in Charleston with the Stingrays, mm -hmm. um, but loved it so much. And we went to the semis that year that I decided to play another year. We went to the finals and lost. And then my third year, I got a concussion, another concussion on a routine hit, and I had to, oh. I had to call it quits. Oh. But... Um, so that the coach that I loved best there was a guy by the name of Spencer Carberry. And then the year two, uh, we had a guy by the name of Ryan Warsawski. They were both great. Um, I truly love playing for them. So yeah. now, I've been blessed to have many, but those are the highlights. Yeah, it makes a difference to have a good coach. I mean, it can make your career or break your career. I mean, it just, you know, it's, it's all that, luck, too, getting the right guy. That is absolute facts. And, um, you know, fortunately for me, 
Um, you know, you know, you know the old saying, cliche, like you just need one person to like you. Need the right one person to like yes. you to get your shot. And yes, I was blessed to have many of those guys over the years. Some of the ones I named, um, and you know, when I was in the AHL with with Jack, um, you know, Rick DiPietro got sent down on conditioning. We were big buddies and workout partners mm-hmm. uh, in the A when he got sent down, and he went up and told Gar Snow about me, and I got the call shortly thereafter. Wow. Um, because of his recommendation and Jack Capuano. And luckily I got to live out my boyhood dream for, you know, almost two years. So that was, that was awesome. super special. That that's was super special. So that's nice of them to do that. I mean, that's really nice. You don't hear that much. Okay. And I was older. So they, you know, that I got, a got, I got a chance when I was younger playing in Anaheim's farm team with the Portland pirates, mm-hmm. uh, had a, you know, that was a good coach too. It was his first year, Kevin Deneen. Yeah. We had a powerhouse team back then. Um, we ended up losing in the semifinals for the Calder Cup in uh, Game 7 with like a minute and a half left of double overtime mm-hmm. to the Hershey Bears, who then went on to win four straight against uh, Milwaukee um, for the Calder Cup. But, I mean, there was you can look at that team. That was the who's who. I don't want to name drop, but it was insane. Yeah. Almost the whole team played in the NHL. So, wow. you know, we'll be Hall of Fame. One of them will be a Hall of Famer, in my opinion, 100%, possibly two of them. Yeah. Um, and Corey Perry and Ryan Getzlaff played oh, yeah. about 35 games with us. Um, so, no, it was super special. But I got a call up back then when I was young, and I went up and had already had a ton of fights, was a little dinged up. And uh, I fought the champ, Derek Bugard, and, um, you know, he laid me out. Everyone loses fights. And so I kind of never got another shot after that. Um, went back down to the A and was just kind of like, you know, I've always enjoyed my role no matter what it's at. I take great pride in being the big brother. And, um, you know, it got to the point where, you know, you still believe and you're going to hopefully get there and working extremely hard every day yeah. for that. Um, but I kind of was like, I, you know, almost got to the point where I was like the high paid babysitter, you know, I was making good money in the American league, mm-hmm. um, you know, being a good teammate, making sure that the investment's protected, which is the talent that's yes. going to go up the young guys and, and, um, you know, just try to win and help the boys in any way you can. And then, I got the call at 31 years old. On my 31st birthday, I got called wow. up to the Islanders. So that wow. was <laughs> that's pretty rare, um, yeah. you know. But I'm super thankful to the big fellow above, um, you know that 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 happened, and I was able to run with the chance. And um, yes. you know, so that was cool. Yeah, that's awesome. And when you got to the Islanders, was that what they told you? You got to protect the players. They didn't need to tell me that, man. No. I've been doing that same job uh-huh. since I was 15 years old. So it's not like I was going to all of a sudden turn it on and score goals. You know, um, you know, I wasn't confused. I've known since 15 that I was going to have to play a rough and tumble style, and bang the body, you know, good passes, get it in, get it out, create energy, um, create mm-hmm. havoc. And when someone wants to go, it's go time. So, yeah. you know, I knew all along and, you know, I truly love my job. I'm not like one of these tough guys you'll talk to that, you know, complain about it i loved it uh, i miss it every day and i took great pride in um you know doing the dirty work so the so the good guys can win yeah i might ask you some basic questions about fighting because a lot of my people out there don't know that what the details of the hockey so one thing is like what makes you want to fight somebody is it that they chirp or is it just they you retaliate after a hit or well, there's just so many different scenarios. Um, you know, like sometimes your team might come out and um, they're not playing well or flat or mm-hmm. getting pounded. They might score two or three early goals on us. You know, so a guy like me would go out and challenge the other team's nuclear weapon, which is their heavyweight, um, and, you know, hopefully have a have a nice win, which gets the boys and the crowd all going and creates energy and kind of, you know, turn the tide and change the seas. And then, you know, we come back and win. That's a momentum swing. Um, Sometimes it's after a bad hit on one of your skilled players. Um, You know, it might be, um, you know, there's so many different scenarios. Um, You know, one of the things about our job is you have to be ready to fight every night. And it could be any shift. You might have sore hands. You might have a bad shoulder. Um, it's It's a real selfless job. And um, you know, even more mentally than physically, but it's very hard physically. And um, you know, I was blessed to do it for a very long time, but there's so many different scenarios. I mean, it could be, it could be a guy on the other team that I don't like, um, that is a heavyweight and, you know, those ones you kind of, you know, if you don't want to go, you might have to force them, um, yeah. by running one of their star players or 
just kind of going at them. But usually, you know, most guys are uh, are really humble that do what we do. It's the most humbling job in pro sports. Mm-hmm. You know, if you take anyone lightly, you'll be looking up at the lights at any time. Um, you know, it's um, we're not as talented as a lot of the guys, so you have to bring other value in terms of helping young guys, being a good teammate. Yeah. Um, you know, and I loved it, man. Um, and I truly miss that adrenaline rush daily. I mean, uh, yeah. there's nothing in the real world that replicates, um, duplicates that. So yeah. there's so many scenarios. I mean, we'd have to talk about it forever. Uh, <laughs> but most, you know, I fought six of my eight groomsmen. So, you know, you're a lot of the times you're not mad. It's just you're, you're fighting for the crest on the front and not the name on the back. Like, I'm friends with so many other tough guys, but yeah. that's our job. You know, that's how we feed our families. That's how we're trying to get up up the ladder. Um, you know, so it's a lot of times it's just a basic conversation like we're having. Like, yeah. hey, brother, it's kind of getting rough out here. Um, you know, we got to show these dudes what we're about. Um, and we'll, you know, if two guys like that, even though we might be best friends, we fight. You know, we might tap each other on the head after and say, hey, great fight, brother. You know, you're all jacked up. Yeah. But, you know, you're doing it for the boys. Um, and then that kind of calms the sea. So then everyone else kind of plays, you know, um, a lot cleaner. And they're not taking liberties and they're not running around. Um, it kind of takes the seas from being a storm to to very quiet pretty yeah. fast. And uh, do you ever talk to any of the guys after a fight, like after the game? Do you ever meet with any of them, or does Oh happen? yeah, absolutely. I used to meet with my boy Jeremy Oblonsky all the time, and we fought many times. <laughs> I was the best man in his wedding. He was one of my best men and groomsmen. <laughs> um, you know, we we'd be bleeding or have black eyes or whatever. And my wife and and his wife and uh, our daughters. You know, they were young, young kids then, like babies, but they're all we're friends. So we don't kiss, go kiss and hug and say hello. <laughs> I mean, that's that's literally what people don't understand. Is yeah. Most of us know each other and have tremendous respect for each other because we know it's the hardest job in both sports. So, yeah. um, you know, there's a few that you don't like, and yeah. um, but the majority of them are, are incredible human beings. Yeah, that's um, it's good for you to say this because people don't know out there that are listening. So that's why I'm asking these questions. Do you have a, a for preparation of a fight? Did you ever prepare for a fight, or you just? Oh yeah, no. I mean, if if you're not preparing, then you're you're confused because it's it's the only sport in the world where you're legally allowed to throw bare knuckles. Um, you know, and it's the ultimate competition and also the ultimate deterrent. So, mm-hmm. no, I'd be studying. I watched every – I even watch guys like Timo Solani, you know, fight. Um, I watch all of them. Um, not so much anymore, but I still watch a lot of them, to be honest. I've been out of the game a long time, since mm-hmm. 2018. Um, but I, I love that element of the game, you know. Um, sacrificing yourself um, for a band of brothers, you know, everyone pushing and pulling to win. Um, you know, you don't win them every night. You don't win every fight either. Yeah. Um, but it's all about, you know, hopping back on the horse and being ready to rope and ride for your brothers. Uh, it takes a lot of, a lot of cajones, um, intestinal fortitude is yeah. how I'll say it. Oh. Um, and yeah, man. Um, but I prepared tremendously. I did, mm-hmm. uh, boxing, kickboxing, MMA, um, studied everyone, watched all their fights beforehand, weeks in advance to prepare for them. Um, there wasn't a day that I wasn't scouting someone. Um, you know, you have to, you know, you only get one brain. It's not like you blow your shoulder out or you need a wrist operation, hand, knee, whatever, yeah. hips. You know, you only get one brain and, um, you know, we're not out there playing patty cake. There's no one fighting and it's it's not, it's real. You know, yeah. I have over 400 and something stitches in my face you wouldn't tell couldn't tell because luckily some of them were good seamstresses but um you know it's we're not playing patty cake it's it's the real deal yeah uh, i gotta ask you this and uh is there an unwritten rule where can you play physically rough with a superstar in the nhl or you play the same way against everybody is there that unwritten rule if you went up against crosby or ovechkin is there that you know Nah, well, the real guys, I mean, the real guys that are tough, Mm -hmm. like tough physical players, they don't change their game on anyone. You know what I mean? Like you're playing everyone the same way. There's no special, special treatment out there. I mean, you're not going to cheap shot a superstar, but if you did, then, 
you know, you know that a lot of guys are coming for you and they're going to want their pound of flesh, right? They're also protecting their brothers. Mm-hmm. So, no, I, I mean, I'm, I would run all kinds of superstars uh, with clean, trying to make clean hits on them, you know? Okay. And then that, what that does is that might ignite the other guy who might be sleeping or, you know, they might be up and he might not be willing to fight me when I ask him nicely. So you kind of have to bring the fight to you by being a great hitter and being physical. So mm-hmm. for me, I, I hit everyone. Um, that's, that's what I was best at was creating energy and hitting and, you know, and then the fighting takes care of itself, you know, win or lose. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, one of the things I do not like, which I think you're going to ask me probably is nowadays, you know, after every big clean hit, it seems like there, you got guys jumping in, right? Yeah. Or, or, (laughs) you know, so, you know, I agree with, the fact, like, if someone hits your star, just say, like, when I was there, John Tavares or some of the younger stars or, like, a Mark Strait or a Dougie Wade that was an old legend that was a star, you know, guys like that, well, then obviously you it's that arriving five-pack mentality, wolf-pack mentality where you're all in there. Um, but, you know, I do, I do think it's a little sad that, you know, this is a physical boom. This is a contact sport. Um you know, it's kind of like Europe. Like, there should be allowed to have clean hits and just get up and be a man, dust off the dirt or yeah. whatever the snow and and keep going. I mean, I don't I, – I, I'm a, the most pro-fighting guy you'll ever talk to, but watching it, I'm just like, well, go out and hit their best player. Like, you don't have to be, like, you know, someone jumping someone like that. Yeah, uh, it's a clean hit. They're jumping all the time. And if the guy has his head down cutting through the middle, that's his problem. I agree. I mean – I know they, you know, they, the league is trying to clean the stuff up because of, uh, you know, concussions. And I understand that because I've been through a bunch of them. Um, but I do think that a lot of guys nowadays, they've watched too much stick handling videos. And it's not <laughs> like the old days where they're, they have their head up the whole time handling the puck like that, right? Yeah. They yeah. have their head down. And when you have your head down, it's pretty hard to go everything happens so fast out on the ice me you know you play it it's it's very fast and to try to place your shoulder on their body when their head's buried is very very hard especially going 24 to 30 miles an hour the top players are probably getting up to 30 miles an hour um, on the ice that's very fast so you know um I still have the mentality where if their head's down, they should get blasted. But unfortunately, you do that nowadays, you probably won't play very long and you'll be suspended and lose more money than you're going to make. So um, there's a fine line. Um, But I do miss the battle in front of the net. Yeah. Like some of that, some of that more warrior mentality stuff. Now, you know, there's a few guys like the, the captain on the Rangers. He's an incredible open ice hitter. Does it clean? You know, there's certain guys in the league that can really throw the body around, and those are the, that's still what I like. I mean, yeah. um, I love the physicality of the game. Um, you know, and yeah. the, but it'd be I'd, I'd be some kind of a caveman to to not be honest about you know the game is at an all time high in terms of talent. I mean, like everyone is so skilled, everyone skates so well, it's so much faster. Um, yeah, I mean, but there's, yeah. There's less ho- less uh, as holding guys, and that's why there's that speed. They don't allow the guys to get held up anymore. And, and that's yeah. also why there's a lot more concussions. Yeah, because you know you got these guys train every day just like we did, but it's different now. It's so specialized and made for performance. You know, you're a skills coach. You understand what I'm talking about. Like, yeah. So when you can't impede someone from flying. 24 to 30 miles an hour and you can't exit out of bounds like football or other sports um you know that's that's like a car accident every shift so yeah um you know and plus there's not killers in the league well there's a few there's a few i can't say that there are a lot of guys that i like actually and i can name them but um you know there's not one on every team no so you know, and sometimes they don't play. They might have them, but they're only going to play them when the other team has their nuclear weapon heavyweight in the lineup. So, yeah. you know, there's no um, – the way I look at it is guys aren't – don't have to, you know, own their stuff as much anymore. They, you know, they're not held accountable because they're like, well, there's no one's going to do anything about this. So, you know, it is what it is. And so, um, you know, I think that 
you know, the game is awesome, but there yeah. is they could let it, some more stuff go. Yeah, and uh, what do you think of the guys that turn their back? Because when I played, we never saw anybody turn their back. Now you see it all the time, and I don't feel sorry because it's their problem for turning their back. Exactly. And so, you know, like think about a guy like Yager, right? Yeah. Like he's so talented. He's such a big horse out there. Same thing with a guy like Melkin. You know, just a massive European that's super strong, has amazing edges. When he's protecting the puck, he's also ready for when someone comes to counter hit him. Yes. You know, and then usually those guys, like, you remember Justin Bufflin, or Bufflin? Big yeah, Buff? my favorite. <laughs> he's a savage. Like, I used to run him, and I would knock the wind out of myself. I mean, he's a tank, and he's so good on his edges for such a big man. He's an amazing player and skater. He would blow me up. Like, just reverse hit. He protected in the puck, and I come four check. Boom! You know, and yeah. I'm down. I mean, you know, so I don't – I think that you should be doing a cutback, you know, or you should keep your feet moving. But if you're that talented like those guys and that strong, then let the guy come. But some of them, it's almost like they're taking dives, you know what I'm saying, yeah. just to get penalties. And that drives me absolutely. It drives me absolutely bananas. Yeah. They should get an Oscar for it. I don't watch NHL anymore. I think I've watched one game in the last three years. I mean, I don't – it's not like it used to be. And uh, it's unfortunate. I think the game's going the wrong way. I mean, skill-wise, it looks great, but the game itself – with the people running it from the office, from the, I don't think it's going in the right direction, in my opinion. Well, Just what I think. I, I, I mean, I can't agree with you more because I like that old school style. Me too. But I still, I still enjoy watching the game because it is insanely skilled now. I mean, I watch it. I'm like, damn. Like, I mean, every player in the lineup has serious talent, you know. But that's part of the problem is. You know, you got a bunch of guys trying to play the same instead mm -hmm. of having, you know, guys that are just great face-off guys that are checkers that shut down the other team's top players, wear yeah. them down, kill penalties. You know, now it's not as many role players. No. And I think that the teams that do real well in the playoffs have a great mix. Um, yes. Agreed. Because it's a different game once you get to the war, right? Um, and at, at every level. I mean, you can be the best team in the world in the regular season but have no jam, have no hitters, have no balls, and you'll be out pretty fast. You know, just just skill does not win. No. You need a great mix with great goaltending. You got to intimidate your opponent mentally and physically. That's part of the game. <laughs> I agree. That's what I, I think should be more. done. Bro you know, Broad Street Bullies won two Stanley Cups doing that. Uh, Islanders were tough too. The Islanders. Oh, we're yeah. talking There's so to, many, so yeah. many, you know. <laughs> Even some of the most skilled teams in the world had had great guys looking after their team. Absolutely. Oilers, same thing, you know. Cemento yeah, think and, about Oilers. They yeah. had McClellan, <laughs> McClellan, McSorley, um, the big boy. Semenko. Killer. Semenko. I mean, they had tons of protection. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you look at almost every club uh, that's – you know, even the Detroit Red Wings. Oh yeah, they had they had guys. You know, um, looking after the Russian Five and, and Iserman and their talent. Um, yeah, I'm a firm believer in you know it's all about being a piece to the puzzle. So yeah, absolutely. If you're doing a puzzle and you're missing a bunch of pieces, well, it ain't going to look too good if you try to frame it, put it on the wall, right? Absolutely. And usually, the ones that don't have, even if it's just a tough guy or whatever, and he might be a smaller piece to the puzzle compared to a guy like that's a superstar or whatever. You know, it's 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 still needed. Um, I think, and I, I I truly believe in that. Uh, yeah. But I love it over there. It's so beautiful. I'm so glad that I got the opportunity to see many countries. I've been to Sweden. Been to Stockholm. Yeah. Oh, nice. Uh, been to Mannheim in Germany and Ingolstadt, and um, you know, been in Finland and all over uh, Russia. You know, the teams in that league. There's so many different countries like Prague, Czech Republic, mm -hmm. Bratislava, Slovakia, Riga, Latvia. We're by Japan. I mean, Minsk, Belarus. I mean, there's all these teams. So it was so cool to just see so many different cultures and different types of people in the stands. And, it's cool. You know, different architecture. I uh, mean, it was just like, I love Europe, dude. Uh, <laughs> I'm such a fan of Europe. Uh, I mean, I'm glad I kind of played it out until an older age. And, and, you know, luckily it worked out to play in the NHL. I was yeah. blessed to have that opportunity. But, you know, if I had a, 
if I had someone, a son or a friend that was playing and they were just stuck in the minors and it didn't look like they were going to get a shot, I would tell them, don't go back down to the lower levels. I was like, go to Europe, man. Yeah. I mean, it's it's just such a cool experience and uh, it's so cool you got to play over there for a yeah. long time. Yeah, it was fun. You know, like it's just a different type of fan too. Yeah. Um, fan experience. Like over here, you know, people get pretty rowdy when there's a goal or a fight or whatever. And they put on a great show over here in North America, right, on the jumbo trots and stuff. But yeah. in Europe, I mean, it's like a soccer match. I mean, for what you guys call football. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, it's like all the flags and, you know, the cheerleaders running around and ice girls and, you know, all the chanting and the different musicians and the drums. And, I mean, it's just incredible. And, like, whether their team is losing, for, like, 4 nothing, 5 nothing, I mean, it's like the whole stadium. It's, it's an amazing experience. It's That's such awesome. a cool experience as a, yeah. as a North American player to go over there. I'm glad you got the experience. That. That's awesome. Uh, I loved it, yeah. dude. I was like, this is unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, it was so cool, man. That's great. Trevor, I want to thank you so much for coming on and talking to me. I really appreciate your time, and it was great to talk to you. It was an honor. Thank you. It's an absolute honor for me too, Jack. And um, yeah, I wish you all the best, buddy. I think it's super cool that you uh, you're helping. You've helped so many players. Thank um, you with your private lessons and stuff, and uh, keep that going, man. That's uh, that's the greatest gift from God is truly, truly being able to help others. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you for the great words. Have all a right, great all the love and respect, brother. You got. We'll keep in touch. Thank you. Enjoy Absolutely. your day. You hit me up anytime. You got it. Take care. Cheers, Thanks. bud. Bye-bye. Bye.